welcome fellow gamers, Freddy the Bows here. Today I'm bringing you a video, more like a podcast. I haven't done this for uh, I thought for ages. And sit back, guys. You can watch something else. Or oh, I have some gameplay on the background with the tank on Rogue Transmissions. And today we're gonna go through the uh, tweaks that happened on uh, the eighth update on the fourth of March. I'm gonna go through the tweaks that happened on the 360 and the PS3. I know that there's some technical stuff that uh, differ from system to system. I'm not gonna go through that. I have a link in the description below that you can go on Battlefield 4 control room and see the tweaks that happened. But I'm gonna go through the grenade tweaks, pistol tweaks, weapon tweaks and vehicle tweaks that are universal to all uh, systems. So um, basically this is going to be like a podcast, this is a, obviously an unedited commentary, it might take a while to go through all that stuff and I'm going to probably I'm gonna, uh, judge a little bit the tweaks they made and uh, for what purpose. So let's get started with the grenade tweaks. It says over here on Battlefield Control Room that they increase the number of the flashbang and the high grenades the player can carry from, three to, uh, from 2 to 3. So I guess that's reasonable since the flashbang and the hand grenade are pretty much useless. So there's no really a big reason not to have three. And uh, let's move on. Also it says increase the effect of the flashbang grenades on friendly and enemy players. I think that's pretty reasonable too. Um, since the flashbang is kind of useless, I hope they don't spam the shit out of it in Operation Locker since it's really dark and you won't be able to see shit. Then we're moving on on the, the buff, increased the maximum damage of the RGO impact grenade, wow, from 67 to 80, wow, unbelievable, they buffed the impact grenade, dude, not like, it's not, it wasn't, wow, it was OP already, why the fuck did they do that, however, they reduced the range of explosion, so I guess, uh, it, it, their explosion is smaller, but it does more damage if it's close to you, that's a little bit of bullshit, because if you hide behind a corner and you want to heal up or reload, somebody will chuck a grenade there and will do 80 damage. Uh, it, it, it will reduce the spam effect, the random grenades, I guess, on Operation Locker. I think this thing applies mostly for uh, 64 month servers. And then we're moving to the reduced the visual and audio effect for the detonation of the V40 Mini to highlight its smaller blast. When compared to other grenades, that's basically really reasonable in my opinion. And then decrease the maximum damage from 80 to 60. Wow, dude, 60. Unfucking believable. So the V40 mains are freaking useless right now. And they also decreased the range at which the maximum damage is applied. Wow, dude. Uh, they totally nerfed the V40 minis. I know that the spam on the, from the V40 minis on Operation Metro and Locker are incredible. And But right now, I think this is basically fucking up the current gen consoles and not the uh, next gen and PC. Six, since this tweak is reasonable for 64-man uh, uh, servers and not 24, that kind of sucks because we, you don't basically have a grenade that does 80 damage anymore. So let's move on to the pistol tweaks, increased the aimed accuracy of the M1911 to make it a viable choice once the uh, Compact 45 has been unlocked. So basically they uh, buffed a little bit the M1911 to make it comparable to the Compact 45, I don't think that in that changes is, uh, anything. But let's move on, then we got an increased the close range damage of the M1911, QSZ-92, FN-57, CZ-75 uh, and Compact 45. So I guess they increased those uh, damages for uh, close range to make it like a one shot less. So the M1911 is going to be like a three shot and the other one is going to be a four shot instead of a five shot. Five shot that's reasonable in my opinion. Since most of those pistols were kind of useless, I haven't seen a single person using the QSZ-92 and the M1911. Then we're moving on to the reduced the delay between pressing the trigger and the bullet firing the Rex and the Magnum. That's pretty reasonable. Thank God they fucking did that. Because the, the time reduction was like retarded, the time delay was retarded. So basically the Rex and the Magnum might be usable now, I haven't tested them out yet. Increased the maximum capacity of the QSZ-92 to 20 rounds, that's a really nice buff. And then additionally reduced the recoil of the QSZ-92 to give it a clear difference from the FN-57. 
so I guess we got a buff of the QSC of the QSZ92 over here and then we got a corrected a small error with a combat 45 accuracy when crowds are prone okay, I don't I don't know anything about this let's continue through the weapon tweaks that uh, we're gonna start with the DMRs increased the damage of all DMRs across all ranges additionally reduced the penalty to accuracy for sustained DMR fire so I guess you can actually uh, allowing more rapid follow-up shots in combat so I guess the accuracy penalty that gives every shot is reduced that's quite nice basically the accuracy spread so that's really good because the DMRs are not usable so far again we will continue to monitor effectiveness of the DMRs in combat and determine if additional action is needed to make the DMRs viable mid to long range weapon that's good seeing dice that uh, they actually care about the um, DMRs now let's continue. Increase the accuracy of pump action shotguns 870, Hawk, Spaz, and UDS, which on the move and aiming, while on the move and aiming, I'm sorry. Uh, so I guess we got a, a little bit of increased accuracy, not that I give a shit about pump action shotguns, they were pretty good already. And then we go to the MTAR at last, reduced the long range damage of the MTAR to bring it in line with uh, the rest of the carbines. So apparently they fixed the MTAR because it was retardedly OP. Then moving on to adjusting the way inaccuracies handle when transitioning from hip fire to aim fire. That was a bad guys from probably um, from people that didn't know it. If you were shooting and hip firing, name down the side, you didn't get an accuracy increase. It was it was basically like aim uh, hip firing. So that was a bug that nobody, not like the majority of players didn't know, and that fucked up a lot of people. And I think this is going to be uh, useful. Then we got a heavy barrel buff, as I told you guys never to use it, but they buffed it. The heavy barrel's accuracy bonus is now also uh, applies on the move at the reduced uh, bonus. Uh, this could give the heavy barrel a wider role for players with zero accuracy while aimed in all situations. So I guess uh, they buffed the heavy barrel so it gives a little bit of the accuracy, a reduced accuracy uh, while on the move and aiming down the side. Uh, that may be that might be viable for inaccurate weapons uh, like the AK or some LMGs. Now let's uh, move on. Synchronize the timing of the aim down the side animation of the sniper rifles with your uh, ability to fire while well full accuracy. Players no longer need to wait for additional time after the aiming animation plays to get accurate shots. So there was a, a time difference between the animation and the accuracy increase while aiming down the side. There is still a uh, delay to achieve full accuracy, so quick scoping is still impossible. Thank you guys for doing that. Then uh, we're continuing to the SRR bolt action time has been tweaked and the rate of fire has been lowered. The SRS, I think it means the SRR. The go bolt action has been quick because it was shooting really fast, obviously. The muzzle velocity of the MP7 has been reduced. Also, the MTAR muzzle velocity has been reduced, thank God. And then uh, there's an update on the handling of the one time scopes for the Type 95, A91, AUG, SAR 21, QBZ 951, FAMAS, UTS, MTOR, L85, and F2000. And also they updated the rate of fire on the RPG and the uh, LAW. So that's about it for the weapon tweaks. Let's move on to the vehicle tweaks. Basically, we're nine minutes in right now. Let's get down to business really fast. Reduce the total amount of missiles carried by the mobile a anti-aircraft sorry vehicles from six to four, so you don't have so much uh, missiles with you with the AA. Then they reduced the velocity of the 20 millimeter, can 20 millimeter cannon from 1,200 per second meters per second to 800 meters per second. So the the dump the range like the velocity is the same on the 20 millimeter and the 30 millimeter. That's good, I guess. Then they reduce the physical impact of all the anti-aircraft missiles to prevent helicopters from flipping uncontrollably when hit. Thank God, because the A could fucking destroy the helicopters. The damage values has been uh, has not been changed though. Reduce the cone with the activator missile search for targets, making them uh, require a higher level of skill in uh, predicting. What the fuck that is? I lost it. Predicting where a target will be when the missile is fired. That's actually really good because the activator could hit like fucking meters and meters away from the target. 
Increase the fire, the direct damage from the attack helicopter Gunner's cannon. Increase the direct damage. Okay, that's good. The Gunner will be uh, able to assist the pilot in taking down vehicle targets with this change. So I guess they increase the damage, uh, not the splash damage, the direct damage, I guess, for uh, infantry and uh, uh, vehicles. Moving on to increase the direct hit damage of the Zuni rockets for attack helicopters, thank you. The rate of fire of these rockets combined with their smaller magazine pool make them a poor choice over the other two rocket types though. So I don't know why they did that. Reduce the splash damage and maximum splash damage range of the twin. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. They reduced the uh, the splash damage and the maximum damage of the 25 millimeter guns on the scout helicopter on the little bird. So basically, right now uh, you have to aim and not like randomly kill people that are running. So that's good. They reduced, thank God, the intelligence of the MBT law no skill fucking missiles, requiring the player to aim the missile closer to the fucking target before the smart projectile will activate. Thank God, dude, that thing was overpowered as fuck. Additionally, the MBT law now reloads slightly slower. Thank you. Finally, a bug where the MBT law would pass through an active protection. Yes! Oh my god, they fucking fixed that, gay dude. They fixed the active protection bag when it went through, that was freaking ridiculous. Moving on, they fixed an issue where the active protection and the NPAPS did not properly stop 12G frag rounds. Uh, that's actually not a big importance, I don't give a shit. Reduce the range where the M2 slam will do maximum damage to vehicles from 6 meters to 3 meters. Thanks again, because the M2 slams were really overpowered compared to the regular mines, the anti-tank mines. The range was deemed to be uh, large, making the M2 slam far superior from the M, uh, yeah, M15 AT mines. So basically you can use the AT mine now. Reduce the damage the staff cell does to all targets by 25%. Thank you. This would balance at is uh, the use of staff cell with the, its damage potential. So that's about it, guys. They fixed the vehicles uh, really good. Thanks, guys, for that. I guess somebody's spamming me on battle log. Wait a sec. So that's live, guys. That's not edited. So I'm sorry for that. So I guess they fixed the enter, they fixed some pistols, they buffed the pistols, they fixed uh, the MP7, some are uh, really weird animations and stuff like that. And they made a really nice tweak on the vehicles, thanks a lot, the active protection now works, the MBT law is fucking retarded. Uh, so they fucking fixed that. So that was about it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, I know it's a kind of long video. The gameplay was uh, is a, a random uh, gameplay on the background. Thank you for watching guys, remember to leave a like. And that was basically like a podcast and uh, have a nice day. I'm out.